So it's a uh, World Book Day, which usually is about giving kids good books and teaching them how to read and showing them the joy that is found in books. But since books are for everybody, I thought now would be a good time to share with you five books that changed my life. I mean, there's loads more. Obviously, I'm, I've read a few books over the years, um, but these are five books that changed my life, some in drastic ways, some just in reading habits, and just some that just sort of expanded my own world somewhat. So, the first one I'm going to go with, take you all the way back to, uh, I believe it's 2001, let me just check the date, 2001, yep. Now, I've never been a huge fan of crime fiction, it's just never really worked for me on TV or films or whatever and certainly not in a book form I was very much into my sci-fi and uh, fantasy and all that as one would expect and horror of course but in 2001 my then partner who worked at Joe Smith brought a few books home and one of them was this book which I read because so it sounded like an interesting premise for I'd give it a go and suddenly Crime grabbed hold of me, and it's all because of this book, Sleepyhead, by Mark Billingham. It's one of the few books that I've also got a new copy of recently, but this is the original, 2001, which means it's now 20 years old. Crazy, but true. Um, it's a really interesting premise, very well written, it's got a lot of humour to it as well, very grim and certainly goes in places you would possibly not expect. Um, Billingham, of course, has developed quite a career out of these books since then. He's written well, at least 20 of them, I think, one a year. Um, his Tom Thorne books. And just as an interesting aside, as a nod to this guy, in my third big finish Doctor Who short trip, the main character was called Mark Thorne. Mark, after Mark Billingham, Thorn after Tom Thorn, the uh, main protagonist of this series. So yes, this one changed my life in the sense of it really got me to crime fiction, which I still read a lot of, which curiously led me then in 2010, I'm guessing, thereabouts, to another sort of crime, um... It's got the trappings of crime thrillers anyway, but this series of books has a much uh, more of a, I don't want to say supernatural, but it certainly has a undercurrent of connectedness to the earth and a very dark, uh, preternatural, otherworldly vibe to it. Um, but again, if you've not read these books, I don't want to give away too much. But it was this book. Every Dead Thing by John Connolly. As I say, it's kind of about crime because it's all about a private investigator called Charlie Parker who has only just lost his wife and daughter and on the hunt for the killer over the course of many, many, many books he discovers a very different world to the one that we all see and take for granted. But what I love about this book and why it really changed my view is that there's a very poetic quality to Connolly's writing. It's um, it's very seductive, very uh, involving. It drags you in in a way that a lot of prose doesn't. To the point where I will maintain and have done for some time now that he is by far one of my best writers, if not my favourite writer. And I've read pretty much everything he's written now. But yes, so this one changed me changed my life in that it grabbed me, it took me deeper into darker things in terms of fiction and showed me that genre is not straightforward, not just one thing. You can blend genres in a very clever, enticing way. Another book, which let's go back a few more years, um, to early 2000s, I guess it would be again. Um, yeah, at least early 2000s. Now, at this point, I'd only recently become a become a gay man. 
came out as gay, accepted this side of me, I suppose. Um, and this book, above among you know, above most actually, showed me that in fiction you can write a decent crime thriller mystery and have solid gay leads. And they don't have to be over the top, stereotypical. It doesn't have to all be about sex, sex, sex. It's all about a relationship and real people. And it's this book, The Lodger, by Drew Gummerson, um, which is, curiously says it all that, this is the only book from Gay Men's Press that I still own. And I bought this when it came out in 2000 and something or other. Uh, 2000 and, should put my glasses on, 2002. So, early days. And it's one of the very few books that I kept because it, it showed me there's, it's important in prose, in fiction, to have, I hate to use the word representation because it's such a modern term and it, I don't think it really conveys the right thing, but it showed me that if you want to write books about the real world, then you need real people. And often that means people of different genders, of different sexual preferences, different identities, whatever you want. And this showed me you could do that without going down the cliche route. Um, fourth title. Now, in uh, the 90s, for about uh, 10 years, give or take, I got heavily into Christianity, like hugely heavily into it. got very fundamental, evangelical to a point, in fact. Um, but towards the end of this time, during when I got to the late 90s, I uh, was having some serious doubts, some serious questions that I couldn't quite formulate, not in my mind, certainly not vocally. And I came across this book, which I have read, and at first I couldn't get into it. But then in the late 90s, I tried it again. And through the course of the novel, certain questions were asked, which are uh, very much vocalised while I was thinking. Some fundamental theological questions that my head just wasn't quite working. I didn't quite grasp it, thinking, hang on, this doesn't quite work. And this book is, curiously, Anne Rice's Memnock the Devil, part of the Vampire Chronicles. Easily the best part of it, in my opinion. Um in which Vampire Lestat is taken on a tour of heaven and hell by the devil, Memnock himself. And as it says, it poses a lot of questions and get offers answers that related to me and made me understand what I was trying to work out in my own head. So this one quite literally changed my life because it got me away from Christianity, or as I would say, it cured me of Christianity. Um... And yeah, radically changed my life as a result. So, thank you, Anne Rice. The fifth book, we'll go on a very, very personal level now, um, is one written by me. Because, <coughs> this, I mean, this is only, what, five, six years old now. But I've written a lot of my, over the years, over the, since 2005 in particular, professionally. Um, yeah, you know, I think fairly good stuff tends to improve better with each book, each story, whatever. Um, but this one was the first time that I got to basically write a Doctor Who novel, which of course Doctor Who is a thing I've followed forever, and to prove to myself that actually I can do it. I can do good Doctor Who, and the response to this day has been phenomenal. It's almost universally getting four or five star ratings, always highly recommended by many people, with several people saying it's probably one of the best Doctor Who books written. Which, you know, I don't want to say I agree, but certainly it's one of the best Doctor Who books I could write. And that was, of course, this baby, The Forgotten Son, which is the beginning of the Left Stewart series. Um, it was a challenge, because... I was setting up a new series, so I had to build, re, uh, rebuild the world of Doctor Who into this new format, I suppose you could say. You know, it's Doctor Who, but it's not Doctor Who. It plays in the Doctor Universe, but it's not Doctor Who. 
It had to be distinctively its own thing as well. And apparently, according to all the readers, I achieved it extremely well. Well, the fav my favourite comments uh, when this book, before this book got published actually, I've been working with Candy Jar for a few years by that point, doing the odd bit here and there, editing this, like tweaking this and whatever. But this is the first thing that I wrote with well, for them properly in terms of fiction. And one of the editors there, Haley, at the time, <laughs> I remember Sean telling me that after she read it, she said to Sean, oh, just all this time we had somebody who can really write a book, and we didn't even know about it, which, you know, is a nice thing. So yes, that book obviously changed my life because it got me the recognition, I suppose, that I've kind of always wanted in my writing, you know, for good and bad. It certainly has uh, <laughs> showed me a more toxic side of the fandom of Doctor Who. But it's also shown me, or reaffirmed for me, the joy you can find in Doctor Who, or the Doctor Who universe. And of course, it's just opened up the world for me in terms of other projects I can work on and show them I can do. So yeah, those are five books that have uh, changed my life in different ways. I have many, many more, but only so much time. Um, yeah, so what were you doing for World Book Day? How do you celebrate such things? Let me know. Until next time, be seeing ya.